Welcome to the Kingdom Advancing Ministries. Pastor V and Prophetess Tanya, along with the entire TCAM family, would like to welcome you. Our announcements are as follows. Join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. for service and every first Sunday for communion service. If you cannot join us live, you can catch up on the replay on our podcast. So be sure to like, subscribe, and share. We have Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. This is a time of fellowship and growing in the word together. Men, join Kingdom Minded Men for their Monday night movement at 7.30 p.m. every first Monday of the month. Unless it's a holiday on that Monday, then the service will be held on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Ladies, tune in for Daughters of the King, the third Saturday of this month at 11 a.m. And don't forget to register for Fire and Glory Prophetic Encounter, October 6th and 7th. Early bird registration ends March 31st. If you did not come last year, you want to be in a place this year. The glory of God was on the encounter. So please make sure you register, ladies. You can visit out our Youth Corner, Big, Being Intentional in God, on our YouTube channel for this month's lesson from our youth coordinators, Tevin and Tia. If you would like to give to the ministry, you can do so on your mobile device, our website, or by using the QR code provided here. Please note that you can always contact us via our website, or phone at 1-855-729-8526. Again, 1-855-729-TKAM, T-K-A-M. Hallelujah. Well, amen. What an exciting time, amen. Hallelujah. I'm still excited oh, about still. that. Oh, we still. I've been, I've been eating sleep. Thank you guys for all of you guys who were there working and supporting and cheering on and celebrating the others who um who have elevated in the things of God. And listen, as I said then, and I was, the next moment could be yours. And so thank God that you were you, you you that you found glory. The Bible says that we ought to rejoice with those who rejoice. And you guys were rejoicing, and I'm so excited. I thank God for each and every one of you. We never want to um, have an opportunity where we don't give you guys an opportunity to give and to sow into the things of God, into the work, into the move of God. Yeah, yeah, I know because we know that giving is a time of worship as well. So let's worship God without giving. Don't minimize your seed, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it with a cheerful. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. So give your gift excited, happy about it. And we know that the liberal soul will be made fat. Amen. So give. Go ahead, man. You can give on the website via uh, PayPal or Givelify. Amen. Okay, so those are the ways to give on the website. You can go right onto the website, donate from your phone, um, and you can donate. Yeah. You have two options of how to give to the ministry. Yeah, and, and, and whatever you set in purpose in your heart on tonight, give that. But here, I want to challenge you. Since we're in 23, I want to keep challenging you. Give, tw give $23 on tonight. Oh, yeah, you did say that. What was that, January? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now some of you, some of you have done it, and some of you haven't. Listen, give twenty three dollars. Mm -hmm. If that's all you have, then give it. I tell you, man. Listen, I, I just said you will never go broke being liberal. Um, they just put it. They just put the um the ways to give on the webs on, on 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 right here in the in the chat. So you can give. Um, just click on to that, and there's three. There's multiple ways to give. Amen. Amen. We have multiple ways for you to sow in that. So you um, always, and listen, we pray that God will increase you as you give. Amen. This is not a hustle. This is not, we believe the word of God and we know what the word says. 
Give and it shall be given back in a good measure. Press down, shaking together. He will cause. Listen, let me give y'all a quick testimony. It's not mine to give others because I know the person personally and I've been able to share it. He's they in my house so I can share it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our son participated in the fast. In the fast. Both of them. He did what he could. He got a check and he showed it to us last night for money he didn't even expect to, to, to get. He got a check. Not going to tell you the amount that, that he got because I didn't mind to tell, but he got, it was so unexpected. He, was came, like, he, he came down. He, came, he normally don't show us no money, <laughs> but he came down and showed us money, it, the check. And I said, look at God. Yeah. If he did it for him, he'll do it for you. Why? Because he's no respecter of person. If he did it for one, he has to do it for another. Yeah, and the first thing um, Pastor B said was, man, look how God showed up for you. You you participated in the fast. And he Amen. was like, you could see it on his face. It was registering. And we were like, don't forget God. Like, we always tell our children, don't forget God. Like, God yeah. is so faithful. You can never do anything for God mm -hmm. and he not give it back unto you. Somebody told me this last night and it stuck so so much in my spirit that I told mom will keep this. They told me that whatever, ever God builds or ever what no no let me get it right. Whatever God orders, he pays for. So if he ordered your steps, word, yeah. yes, Lord, that's word. He ordered your steps, he paid for all the provision that's required for that's you. Not your steps. That's it. Man, that, that, that ain't my message, but that'll preach all by itself. If he ordered it, he'll pay for it. Good God of my And I just man, want to share something. I'm you know, we Pastor V and I, you know, as you all know, we've been in ministry for ooh, almost well, you've been like 30 years. It's and, been a while. Yeah, it's been about 30 years, y'all. But anyway, um, just want to share that we've always sown. You mm -hmm. know, this is something that we can testify to, right? And you should follow those who have obtained the promises of through, God through, through faith, faith and faith. patience. Yeah. You know, stop following just any and everybody. I'm going to say it. We're going to say it. We're going to always say it because we need to really stick to the word of God. Amen. And you want to watch the fruit from someone's life. And so... Just want to share that because this is something that we've done through faith and patience. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we have seen God move. This is not our first time sharing our testimony, nor would it ever be our last. Um, just to cry and to cry out about the faithfulness yeah. of God. Yeah. Right. God is so faithful to us. And if we are like him, we should have his attributes. There's mm -hmm. never a time when you called upon the Lord and he didn't show up. Or that he didn't show himself strong. And so we are to be just like that in every area of our lives. Yeah. Amen. And it's not about, you know, it's not about getting things from you. It's about trying to get something to you. Amen. And that's the move of God in your situation. Mm -hmm. We are all standing and believing God for something. Yeah. But here's the thing with a lot of people. Every, a lot of people believe God for something, but don't want to give God anything. Yeah. And they don't trust them with a lot of people don't trust God with their money. Well, you can't. It's true. You can't trust God when your heart is not for God. I understand, sweetheart. I was no, a no, lot we're of talking. people don't we're trust talking. God yeah. in the area but, of their finances. Because when your heart is not totally fixed on the things of God, then your, Amen. your trust is not sold out to God. Let's talk That's about right. let's talk about something on tonight. Amen. Let's move right into the word. Amen. Listen. Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel 15 and 23. Some of y'all know it. Some of y'all have heard it. We're going to talk about it. And then we're going to talk about another, a different perspective on it. Amen. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Yes. Okay. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Hold, please. Hold, please. When you have it, say amen or y'all type amen and I'm gone. It says, don't have it. you don't have it yet? No. All okay, right. I got it now. All right. Still waiting on the good old prophets. You got Amen. it now. Rebellion is like the sin of divination. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. I knew, she, sure. she, she, oh, yeah. I knew she was going to jump into that. Y'all know I don't play with no witches. Anyway. Uh, and it is like the evil of the idolater. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord 
he has rejected you as king. So let's talk about that. For for um, and I, I'm, I got a whole lot of scriptures, but we want let's talk about some things on tonight. Rebellion, rebellion, rebellion. Rebellion is at a spirit of rebellion for a topic on tonight. Y'all flow with me on tonight. Y'all know um, that um, what, we, what I want to share with you guys, rebellion. How many of y'all know that rebellion is running rampant in the world today? Everybody wants to rebel against something. And most of, and most of it now is rebelling against God. Most of it is pointed to God, the rebellion. And how many know there are a lot of soldiers who are fighting to be rebellious. They are in a actual fight to be rebellious. There's a lot of people who take up the fight of rebellion. Why? Because they always want to go against the grain. So here's the thing about rebellion. Rebellion, give, let me give y'all a brief def, def, um, definition of rebellion because there's several, but let me give you mine. Rebellion is the willingness Type that in the willingness, mm. because you have to be willing mm -hmm. to be in rebellion. Rebellion is not a, something that you just, an act of you just not agreeing. Rebellion is a willingness to disobey God's will, mm. the things of God, the order, the order of God, Come on, man. the precepts of God, the character of God, the life of God. Ordinance. The purpose of God. See, people have a willingness not to obey. And we understand that disobedience starts in the heart. Yep. This is not about rebellion. This is not the, the purpose of what I want to drive about rebellion. But we understand that the Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So everything that is initiated out of your heart comes out of your mouth, comes out of the way you conduct your life, your actions towards things starts in your heart. It's a heart condition issue when it comes to rebelling. A lot of people we know don't nobody want to be told what to do. Why? Because their heart is set to not be, you don't own, you don't get to run me. You don't get to tell me how to live my life. It's my life. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And you can bust hell wide open with the choice of your life. Or die early. Yeah, whatever your choice is, that's yep. your choice. Yep. He told us to choose life or death, but he also gave but he also told us choose life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That you may live. But then listen, the greatness of our God is that he said, even if you don't want to choose life, I give you the right to choose death if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And see, a lot of people get so stuck in being rebellious that listen, they don't understand that whatever your, whatever your, wherever your rebellion leads you, mm -hmm. it's going to cost you something in the end. Yep. Let's dig a little deeper. In Luke 22, you don't have to turn it. But it tells us, in the whole, I'm just giving you a, I'm give you a, I'm giving you a synopsis of the chapter of 20, Luke 22. It gives us, it tells us that it is dangerous to rebel against the will and the word of God, and to turn away from His plans, for there is real liberty, or I'm sorry, there is no real liberty in rebellion. That's the chapter 20. That's the chapter of um, 22 of Luke. Okay. Just, I just gave you a synopsis. It speaks about the rebellion. Or the rebellion, the rebellion, the, the rebellious nature of people. That there's no real, <laughs> there's no real liberty. See, people think they're being liberated by being rebellious, going against the grain. Luke 22 is telling us that there's no liberty in having a rebellious spirit. Why? Because it is as the spirit or the sin of witchcraft. Yeah. It's evil. Yeah. It's wicked. It's destructive. Come on, babe. In all of its nature, and it's very divisive. It's a destructive nature. It's a destructive nature of living yeah. sin. Yeah. We know it because our life, when we were in sin, was a destructive nature. Mm -hmm. 
The Bible tells us that sin has pleasure for a moment. Why does it say it has, it has pleasure for a moment? Because it doesn't tell you that the overarching rest, the overarch, overarching recipe and the destruction of your life as, as you live in sin is death. And it's a complete separation from God. But we don't we don't want to talk about that. All we want to talk about is the joy that rebellion gives us for a season. And most people live their lives in seasons. That's good because they live in a season and not realizing that there's another season Absolutely. that you're going to reap yeah, what yeah. you sowed in the last. Yeah, one. yeah, you, 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 yeah, you right on because you right, you right in my message because the season, the season that we want to be in is the season that God has His hand on, mm -hmm. that God has purpose for our life. And here's another thing that we have to be: we have to be spirit sensitive. Mm. Not to walk in rebellion. We have to be so acquainted with the voice of God that we be able that we're able to fight against the spirit of sin and rebellion and witchcraft in our lives. We have to know that when anything speaks contrary to the word of God, it's talking about rebelling against the things of God. Turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Can I add something? Go ahead. And rebellion is not a fruit of the spirit. No. And so if you are not operating operating in the fruit of the spirit, so, you know, rebellion, that's that backbiting. That's that dissension. You know, you cause a confusion. You always talking, but you won't come before. You know, a lot of people do that, right? When they When they're rebellious, right? They always are going around trying to cause havoc, right? That's that that backbiting that the word talks about. And so you really have to make sure, because if you can't go to the person, you already, well, y'all don't want me to call, tell you what you are, but, you know, if you can't go to the person, you know, that that's a... That's not a, that's, you not really who you think you are. You know what I mean? Because you can't even go to the person and say, hey, I have an issue with you. And these are the things that are going on within the church. I don't want to go to, yeah. But so y'all yeah, 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 have, have Philippians 2 and 5, a very familiar passage of scripture. It says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So we we know that in order to, in order to, to keep ourselves from walking into a spirit or walking into rebellion, we have to have the mind of Christ. We have to put on every morning, we ought to say, God, let my thoughts be your thoughts. See, because we can't fight this fight naturally. We can't fight off the attacks of the enemy in our natural minds. We have to put the mind of Christ on. <clears throat> We have to be willing to say, God, I need you. I need you. I need you to give me the wisdom to be able to fight this day, to be able to walk in this day. And that's why we tell you that every morning when you wake up, God, I plead, I thank you for the blood of Jesus and the wisdom of God that goes before me every day. To keep me from myself. Listen, y'all remember the story in the Bible about Absalom, right? Wicked. Let me talk. Let me, Absalom. let me tell y'all about Absalom. Let me talk a little bit about Absalom. Absalom killed his older brother. Why? Because Absalom's older brother, which was his half brother, raped his sister. So what Absalom devised a plan to kill his older brother. But see, here's the wickedness of 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 not just the older brother, but the motive that Absalom did what he did in. Absalom didn't, didn't just kill his older brother because he raped his sister. Absalom killed his older brother because Absalom was motivated for power. Mm, Jesus. Absalom wanted the throne of his father. So in all of Absalom, because see, they tried to talk Absalom down. But Absalom's rebelling and his rebellion and the, and his heart was so 
so wicked and so towards getting the throne. He wanted to, he had other brothers that he that he wanted to jump ahead. He wanted that throne for himself. So he thought by virtue of killing his older brother, he would be next in line. Woo Man, I'm trying to tell you. Your that 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 wickedness of our of, of our hearts will cause us to rebel against sound teaching. Jesus. Sound wisdom. It will it will make you go against everything that that God is sharing with you. He may be God may be speaking through people to tell you something, and that all the time you're fighting against it. And what you were saying about he that he wanted the throne, right? He wanted power. Yeah. And of so he was going against the authority that God has set in place. You know what I mean? Because he was doing it. That's why Cain killed Abel. So, you know, that wickedness of the heart, all of these are acts of the heart and of the flesh. And you might... Go ahead. So in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it says the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, self-ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So I don't care who it is. You know, people put on so many masks, right? But the Lord is, he's saying that if you do this, See, that's the one thing I think you shared this before, sweetheart, and Apostle mentioned this. What is your book going to say? What is your book going to say, right? Is your book going to scream witchcraft? You know, you can you can quote all the scriptures all you want, but if you ain't living it, I'm sorry, you not you. It says right here, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what you your what how many masks you put on. This is saying, and what is your book going to say? Because when you stand before the judgment scene of Christ, you will be, you will be called on the carpet for your dissension, for your backbiting, for the things that you're doing to tear down the kingdom of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to share that, sweetheart. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's good. That's good. Because we have to make sure, even in this local assembly of believers that's that we right have there. together, Come on. we have to make sure that. I, and I watch you guys and I see how, how much you guys love upon each other. And you root and you cheer for each other. Even in that, I want you guys to understand that, listen, you got to make sure that, every, that your heart is always set to do the will of God. And then ain't no wolves And you got to make sure that you fight within your own flesh. You got to kill and buffer your own flesh to make sure those, those things don't rise up in you of jealousy, hate, and envy. And you gotta, you gotta fight with all that's in you. We've, I've seen it over my life in, in, in oh, Christian dumb. I've seen people fight and jockey for the positions, position. for, for what they consider elevation, only to, only to have people talk about you and pull you down. That's why I turned, I turned all of you who got ordained to the crowd on Sunday. Why did we do that? We did that because we wanted to make sure that your standing before the people cannot be used against you. That's it right there. That the opportunity to say whatever needed to be said about whatever character they may have perceived you had was to be said then. And that's and not good. and not later. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because the one thing you don't want to do is if you left the past behind you. We don't need it revisiting you. Amen. And that's why it's important that the Bible says that any man who put his hand up to the plow and look back is not fit. Why? Because once you started pushing and moving forward, you left the past behind you. You forgave who needed to be forgiven. You released who needed to be released and you kept it moving. And that's when you were talking about that spirit of Absalom, you know, it can, it can, it comes to kill. And, and when you were talking about the believers as a body, right, of, as a church, you know, make sure that someone is not trying to cause dissension amongst us, you Amen. know. And if they are, you need to point them back. If you if they come and say, I'm going there tonight, if they're coming back talking about Pastor V and I, Hey, did you talk to them? Ask them because most of the time when you call that lying spirit out, the answer will be no. 
You know what I mean? And so I just wanted to share that because, you know, dissension will try to tear down what God is building. Well, but this is on a surefire rock. Yeah. And so I just want to say that because they get the whispering in your ear, them lying spirits. And instead of saying, hey, have you talked to them? Have you gone to them? And say what you need to say, because often their answer will be no. Well, let's go to them right now. And then half the time they're gonna run the other way. So well, I just wanted to share that. Well, let's, let's talk about that. Um, yeah. Um this turn your Bibles in Romans chapter 16. We still got a little few more minutes on the card. Turn your Bibles. Romans chapter um 16. We're gonna pick up at verse 17. You gotta kill a spirit, man. You gotta kill it. Romans 16, verse 17. We're going to read from 17, 17 through 20. Say it again, sweetheart. Romans 16, verse 17 through 20. Thank you. You got me all there? It says, and now I make one more appeal. So I'm appealing to you guys on tonight. My brothers and sisters, watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith. Mm. Jesus. By teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Watch that spirit of rebellion. Because whatever they don't agree with, they'll start talking against. That's it right there. Whatever they don't like about your life, they'll start talking against. Mm -hmm. So let's, and it's because it's just not about this ministry. It's about your life as well. Mm -hmm. It's about the things you're doing in your life. Whenever they don't agree with what business decisions you make, they'll start talking about it. People who work and work and operate in rebellion, why to sow discord and division? The funny part Stay of away from them, the Bible says. It says avoid them in this one, sweetheart. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. Yep. They are serving their own personal interests. Yep. And listen, by smooth talk mm. and glowing words, they deceive. Innocent people it's always the innocent bystanders who get shot, mm -hmm. who get hit, mm -hmm. who get caught in the crossfire. Yep. Jesus. There was a man this week delivering, um, doing an Uber over in Southeast, dropping people off. He was just making up some part-time money. He got caught in, the, in, in, in two Jesus. neighborhoods fighting, and they shot his cop, and he died. Lord have mercy. It's always the innocent when people rebel. When people just got to do it their way, it's always the innocent who gets struck. So as the person who who's going on, who's excited about the things of God, who who are who are on fire for the things of God. But here's here what they who they think is are solid believers talking reckless and crazy about another believer. And they get caught in the crossfires and now it damages their Jesus. spirit. And what did you say about the light? They come mm -hmm. as a and now it damages their spirit. Mm -hmm. And now they are affected yeah. for, for seemingly forever about how they view the body of Christ. And a lot of them turn back. Yeah, to the world. Yep. A lot of them go back unto the world because they don't see any difference in the body of Christ and the satanic actions of the world. They talking about people in the church. And y'all know that there's no perfect church. Why? Because you're there. And, mm. So that's what I'm not. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those who actually the Bible. The intelligence says, watch out for people who cause division and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk, y'all know the people. There we go. Y'all know, y'all know the people who catch you in the corner. Yeah, oh yeah. Who catch you off to your side, see you at your most vulnerable, and they start whispering and they start sowing discord. Jesus. Where, you, where you know they ain't really what they say they are. They ain't really who they say they are. Man, they don't love you like they think, like you think they do. They talk. They start so that little snake starts slithering in. <laughs> And see, when you are a part, I just have to say this, the true church, right? And when you're a part of a deliverance, like this, we operate in all of the gifts. Those spirits are coming. They are, it's automatic. It, it, they try to attach themselves. You know, it's witches that will try to attach themselves and bring down. Listen, I've studied this. In, okay. So just know 
Go ahead, sweetheart. But it's, that that angel coming as an angel of light, that's how Satan did. It says, by smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive yeah, innocent right. people. Verse 19, mm. it says, but everyone knows mm. that you are obedient to the Lord. Those who stay solid. Come on in. The enemy even knows that you are obedient to the Lord. The ones who are sowing discord and those who operate in the, that wicked spirit, they know that you are committed to the things of God. That's why they're trying to come and get you off course. That's it right there. And it says, though, it says, this makes me very happy. God is happy when you're able to stand. Hallelujah. Paul was saying, this makes him very happy. That when you're able to stand against it. And I want you to be wise in doing right and stay innocent of any wrong. Verse 20, it says, the God of peace. Yeah, yeah, y'all typing in the God of peace. The God of peace. Come on, y'all typing in the God of peace. The God of peace. Because we know when the enemy starts raging, you can always count on the God of peace to show up. Mm -hmm. When you stay, when you stand strong and you stay firm in the things of God. Hallelujah. And you shut the door to that nonsense in the devil's face and say, no, no, not here. I'm not falling for it. Mm. It says, he says here, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Hallelujah. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. We need the peace of God. We need the power of God. We need the presence of God to stand in the fight against the, the enemy. The divisiveness of the devil. Mm -hmm. And here, I would encourage you, not even on your job, don't get around those conversations and engaging in those conversations on a job where people are always talking about people and just always trying out those discord swords. Yeah, I know who they are. They walk around with a trash can. <laughs> yeah, I know who they are. Ah, always trying to dump something. <laughs> they, ain't, they ain't hard to find. You sure? You know they all in the corner. You know why? They, you know why they ain't hard to find? Because they're always trying to find you. Posted up in the corner. And rebellion. Why does the Bible say the, the that rebellion is as they as the spirit of witchcraft? Because it's wicked. Amen. It's treacherous. It's divisive. It has no authority other than to other than to try to make things up to get you off. It tells you things that may that may seemingly be true, but there's no real truth to it. Mm -hmm. And rebellion also doesn't want to be under the rule of anybody. And that's so dangerous, right? Because uh, you you not nobody can tell you anything. Nobody. Can, I mean, you're talking about a very day. That is what God opposes so much is rebellion. I mean, all throughout scripture, you see where the children of, children of Israel rebelled, 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 right? And then there were consequences. There are always consequences. Why do you think they went in the desert? For, they were walking around yeah. in the wilderness for 40 years. Complaining, just doing it. Like God hadn't sent manna. Like, it's like... Even in even in him even in him blessing them throughout the forty years, yeah. they still complained. Yeah, nothing was good enough. They didn't outgrow their clothes. They didn't outgrow their shoes. One time they wanted so much manna from heaven. He said, "Here," yeah, and they, the glutton of them just it was coming out their nostrils. So you know the wickedness of man's heart is just um, it is what it is. You know, and so. The rebellion, just watch that. You know, we all have to come under authority, you know. And I know some people will be like, I'm just under the authority of God. No, you're not. Because if you run that red light, guess what? You're going to get a ticket. You might get your license taken. You may never have a license again, right? Yeah. You might get locked up and fined. So come on, let's not say we're only under the authority of God. We have to follow the order of the. Don't pay IRS and see what you get. How long you want to do tax evasion before they find you? They coming for you. It don't matter how much money you got. Y'all see how many people, you know, people for years think they got away with something. But you have to obey the laws of the land. Yeah. You have to render the Caesar what's due to Caesar. You can't do that. And so you have to operate in integrity. Integrity, like you said before, is going to cost you something. To, to, to live right, to do right, is going to cost you something. Yeah. And rebellion, 
does go it goes all against that and it's so sad i've seen so many we see so many people who've lost their lives from being rebellion if they would have just adhered to what the police officer said you know they would still be here so you know think about that when we talked about those acts of the flesh you're gonna have to buffet your flesh because your flesh is gonna want to do whatever it wants to do when it gets good and ready yeah so you have so, to fight yeah. you have to fight within you you have to I understand this. We 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 are we are well understanding of what and what times we're in. Oh man, wicked. We understand that this is a time of that the enemy is re, is trying to unleash everything they mm -hmm. everything he possibly can to get people off and to and to distract and to deter people from following Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And in that, the spirit of rebellion is rising up in people more and more and more. They don't, that's why they don't care about going and they don't care about obeying laws. I see so many people run lights, run stop signs. They do all, because it's a lawless thing that we're, because it's rebellion rampant in the world. And when this, like, like the brother said earlier, when the world turns over and God gives people over to a reprobated mind, yeah. on any and all things go. Anything can, anything happens when the individual cares nothing about the, the authority and the power of God. Why? Because they, one, don't believe that there's consequences at the end of this. That's good. They believe that this is hell right here. Listen, I always tell people when I'm when we when we talk about the things of God and we're introducing Jesus Christ to them. Would you rather gamble with your soul to say that there's no God and get to the end of this only to find yeah, out that God is real? Mm. Most of them are going to reach. That's most people's reality because a lot of them are already gone gone on to gone on. They've transitioned out of this world. And so I say to the ones who are still here and those who are listening, will you rather gamble in rebellion Ooh, and say that the, the Bible says that there's a fool who says that there's no God? Are you that fool? Are you that foolish enough to, to really perceive that there's no God? Even though you want to do it, you want to follow after your own flesh. Just say that as opposed to saying that there's no God. You want to do what your flesh wants you to do. Yeah, because most of us know what's wrong and what's right. We choose we choose to do wrong because we don't want nobody else telling us how to live our lives. That's why rebellion has such a hold on people. Not because, because it's the willingness to do wrong when you know to do right. That's when you know that you're being bewitched. You know that there's a spirit outside of God's spirit that has you entangled. And what we are, what I'm saying to you, get it wrapped up, tangled up in Jesus. Because you need something to fight with. You need the power of God to fight the thoughts of the world. To fight the thoughts of my flesh. Your flesh. And you can only do that when you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. You need the power of God operating on the inside of you. So that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil in this time. You have to. You need something to battle with. Go ahead. No, I'm just listening. Now. And we're trying to, I feel like you're trying to reach someone before they get to that reprobate mind, right? Like I, I just see it's like right you're you're scathing on the line of reprobate mind where your conscience is seared with a hot iron. Then yeah. and I but I I'm saying when you're yeah, ministering right absolutely. now, I, I I feel it by the spirit of God absolutely. that it, you're scathing like your this is your warning. You the this is your last warning and you are right there that you're gonna cross over and there'll be nothing that can be done. You know, when that reprobate mind and your conscience, a conscious seared like a hot iron, think about an iron when you burn something. There's no coming back. That stain is on you forever. It's, ever, it's there. And, and and no one can reach you. And so when you keep ministering, I feel the pull by Holy Spirit 
because you're scathing literally the yeah. line of that reprobate mind. Yeah, because you know that famous blouse you had. Once you get that stain on you, that stain is on it forever. Man, that blouse. You, you have to de- you have to destroy it. <laughs> you end up throwing it away because yeah. you can no longer use it. It's no longer useful. That's what a reprobate mind is. Okay. When you can never, when you cannot be used, and there's no there's no use of you for you anymore. Yeah. You've given yourself over. Mm. That no matter how much I try to scrub you. No matter how many chemicals I put on you, that's the same thing with, with God and, this, and God is when He, no matter how, how much, much how much word He gives you and puts in you, and and you He's trying to get you, he's, you won't you won't change, you won't. There's nothing to get the stain off. Jesus, you don't want to be turned over to a reprobate mind. Listen, I encourage all of you guys. If you're watching out there. And you you and you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Stop waiting. Stop look. Stop procrastinating. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Come on. There's no time or this is in the spirit. If you want Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, lift your hands and we pray that the power of God will fill you with the Holy Spirit right where you are. In the name of Jesus. We pray that the, the power of the Holy Ghost will touch and will, will get a hold of your tongues and you'll start speaking in, in your heavenly language. And listen, that language then will become secondary to you. Why? Because it will build you up on your most holy faith. Keep speaking and you'll keep building and it will give you your language with God that the enemy can't come in and infiltrate. Yeah, you want to have your conversation with God where the devil can't get in. Ah, man, what a wonderful conversation. How many of y'all know that? What a wonderful conversation we have with God when we speak in our heavenly language. Why? Because we know that the devil can't infiltrate. Hallelujah. Go ahead. And I just beseech you by the spirit of God to watch the fruit of a person. Yeah. To watch the fruit. To watch the fruit, amen. To watch the fruit of a person, yeah. Because we are in some times where deception is all around us, and so to watch, stay close to the to the bridegroom. I'm telling you, stay close to the bridegroom. Yeah. Stay close. Stay close. Yeah. And 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 then and then that watch and, and watching them, you want to avoid rebellious people. If Amen. Every, if, if you know if, if somebody's always fighting against something, they just can't never go along. And I'm not just saying go along to get along, right. but when the word of God is being taught and they and things are being taught right and, and things and, and things are going right. And anybody who always has something contrary or negative to say, you want to avoid them people. Yeah. Yeah. It's the truth. You want to stay away from them people. Far, far away. Yeah. You want people who are going to help you elevate in the things of God. Mm-hmm. And listen, if you're out there watching in this, as I said, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come on. Tonight is the night. Oh, Today is the day. Right now is the time. Mm-hmm. Receive. Surrender your life to God. Lift your hands and say, God, fill me. Come into my life. Fill me with your presence. We don't tell people here confess in your mouth and believe with y'all. We know that's on that's only one. But making a confession without having a possession is not is you want the possession. You don't want a car with no engine on in it on the inside of it. You want the power of God, the Holy Spirit living on the inside, taking up as a bold on the inside of you, giving you the wisdom to live out this life because we need we need the we need the Holy Spirit to walk out the things of God in our life. Amen. And if you need to be baptized, reach out to us. If you're in this DMV area, Metro, D.C. and Virginia area, reach out to us on the Kingdom Advancing website. Let us know you want to be baptized. Someone will reach back out to you. We'll coordinate with you. We'll get you down in water. Hallelujah. We'll get you down in the, in the recognition of Jesus Christ's death, bro, and his resurrection. Amen. Yes, indeed. But we want you to repent. And you know what I tell y'all here at Kingdom of Advance? We don't want to do a 360 because a 360 puts you right back where you just came from. We want you to do a 180, which makes a turn away from darkness, turn away from sin, a life of sin, a pattern of sin, a behavior of sin, a willingness to sin. I didn't say sometimes things things happen. I said a willingness. That means you wake up every day f- trying to figure out how can how can I be a better sinner. Yeah. We want you to turn away from that. Mm-hmm. 
and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And I listen, I promise you, not in my own strength, but in the power, in the, in the, in the, in the authority of God, that when you make a real conscious and a full fledged heart decision to give God your everything, guess what he does? He gives you his everything. Amen. And I like his everything. Why? Because he puts his super on my natural and now I become supernatural and I have the power to do supernatural things because God, the father is on the inside of me. Amen. So listen, we love you here. And one, oh, one final pill. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you want to partner with the kingdom advancing ministry, come on, listen, we don't love you because God loves you. And we serve God here. We worship God here, and we teach the word of God here. Amen. Amen. You may jump and shout sometimes. You're going to get the word a whole lot of the time. And we know by because we know that it's the word that keeps you. Hallelujah. We know it's the word that builds you up and sustains and makes you strong and to be able to fight. Hallelujah. The things of your word, of the, of the life and the world that you live in. You need the word. Amen. Amen. Yeah, type it in. I need the word. You can't get away from it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when you have God, you have the word because he and his word are one. Amen. Amen. So listen, we love you out there. God bless you. Thank you for always tuning in with us, checking us out. Thank you for taking your Wednesday and spending with us here at the Kingdom Advancing Ministry. We pray and we believe that you got something out of today's lesson. We love you. Listen, watch out for a spirit of rebellion. Amen. 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 Be blessed. To the next Wednesday. Check us out on Sunday for Sunday morning service. There's a word from the Lord. And I, I listen, I, I, it's going to be an exciting time because it's going to bless your life. I'm telling you. God bless you. We love you here. Stay on with us if you're on with us live. We know we like to hug up on you, love up on you. God bless you out there. Be blessed. Don't be kingdom advances. In Jesus' name.